you look at USC, and I'm not going to look at the number. You know, the, the number is what it is. And again, after last year, after um, three years ago, they have, they have been up and down. But if, it wasn't too long ago that, you know, even Helton, this is my whole point to my friends. Helton had USC twice in the top 10, top 10 recruiting classes. And this is Helton with a bunch of guys that, that didn't recruit. We haven't had an offensive line coach in I don't know how long, you know. You bring in guys, you know, that's, that's my biggest point is the one, I mean, Riley's amazing in the offense, but the fact that having USC with a real offensive line coach in Josh Henson for the first time in, I, I don't know, a decade that we've had a solid offensive line coach. I mean, we, you're looking at Tony Bazzelli. I'm, I'm looking at guys like that. And they also had it with the basketball game. And you had Tony Bazzelli um, and you had Anthony Munoz. And I'm looking at the offensive linemen USC has had over the years. I'm really thinking that Josh Henson can start pulling those guys back in. And if we can recruit nationally on the offensive line, it's, it's going to be lights out. There's this guy, um, David Woods. He was talking about, he was talking about USC and the floor. He's saying the floor for USC is pretty much what you saw at, at Oklahoma. And I don't really think many people can argue that. I honestly don't. You know, the recruit, recruiting in Southern California, when you have recruits, recruiters like Riley, Dante Williams, Dennis Simmons, these guys are top national recruiters. And these guys are going to hit it hard. You know, they're, they're not going to sit back and let, Riley's not going to sit back and let his staff not recruit like, like Hilton was just horrible. Um, but you know, once now USC has gotten past self-sanctioning, because that's what we did. We got hit by the NCAA first. And then, and then we got hit by guys like Swan and Hayden hiring. I mean, what was Hilton doing at USC for seven years? How long would OSU, Alabama, how, how long would those guys allow a clown? Sorry, I shouldn't say it. A coach like that. <laughs> who really was a great guy, worked hard, but he just yep. was not a very good coach. Yeah. How long would a decent program, and here's the problem, because we didn't have ADs. We had ex-football players who had no reason or right to be there as an AD, you know? And the whole program, how many teams on that list has thrown $100, $100 million towards a coach? Went out and got one of the top three coaches, top four coaches, top five coaches in the country. You know, I just think, I just think we've seen the Nader of USC football because anybody who's been following USC football or even college football, if you give USC a good coach, let alone a great coach, then it's just lights out. So I was just curious, you're, you're ranking. I mean, I see them at 23, I guess I'm guessing that's because we're looking at, you know, Helton and Swan and not paying your assistant coaches and just having a bunch of cronies running around heritage hall. I mean, I really do think that you're going to see, you guys are going to see a, a big difference. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what we're going to do because obviously they haven't done anything, but I can't imagine the staff that he has going forward and the recruiting pool he has in Southern California, as well as USC locks it down locally. And then again, like Pete Carroll did, like Kiffin did, you know, Kiffin would have had a hell of a run if he wasn't working with the sanctions that he had. And he ran out in 2013. I mean, he had a preseason ranked top 10. But the problem was, is there was no depth on either line at all. So uh, I'm just hoping that they can actually get some recruits in and keep them at home. And if they do, then I'm, I don't think there's anybody on that list that SC can't play with. So maybe I can square up the ranking this way. If you took USC for the past three football seasons, I believe they went five and seven when JT Daniels was a freshman. Then they went um, five and one and went to the Pac-12 championship game, but that was only a Short season, didn't really prove that much. They played a lot of close games against bad teams. And then they went four and eight and they were awful. Okay. That, that, sh if we just took that sample of football, they should be like 65 or 70 in the country. Okay. If we are looking at Lincoln Riley and the coaching staff he's putting together and the transfers that he's getting in and the recruiting class he's putting together for 23. And looking forward to, let's say, two years from now, they could be exactly what you're talking about, a team that runs the Pac-12 and is getting to a playoff. Okay, right this second, when I take all these factors into consideration, I'm not saying I nailed it because I don't know. Nobody can nail it. It's, it's, it's an arbitrary number to a certain extent. This, this is about where I think they are right now as a football program right this second. They have 
all this baggage, all this garbage. They have a depleted roster. They just had one of the best coaches take him over. He's restructuring his staff. He's adding transfers, but they're only going to plug so many holes. I think 23 is a good place. I think if they went out with this football team right now and had to play football next month, that they wouldn't be one of the five or 10 best teams in the country, and they wouldn't be a train wreck that they were last year. They would be much improved. That's what I'm trying to rank. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying they're a top 15 team uh, on that ranking. I'm looking at more of a program. With, with the, I'm, I'm maybe not looking at the definition properly. I was just saying that, again, for about the better part of a decade, USC just has not done anything to support that program at all. And now I'm seeing them dump 100. This is, this is blowing my mind. I was hoping we were to pull Campbell or, you know, Luke Fickle. That, that was like, that was my dream. Oh, we, we need this guy. Sure. And then when they dropped Lincoln Riley on us, you know, uh, it, it's more than anything, not the name. It's just, it's just that they're willing to put that kind of cash in. I'm not talking about Lincoln Riley be this, Lincoln Riley be that. I'm talking about the commitment to football that's been missing. You know, Lincoln Riley could come to USC. But who knows what could happen? I'm assuming in the odds are it will be a massive improvement. But what I am saying is, is the fact that USC football just spent a hundred over a hundred million dollars for a coach who's throwing money at a Texas A&M's offensive line coach. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not sure. I don't know what Riley's going to do. I don't know what the team's going to do next year or the year after that. But what I do know is uh, USC now has gone back to saying, you know, I think we want to compete on a national stage in football. And that's where I'm seeing as a program, USC turned a big corner. I'll ask it this way. So you're impressed with the money that was shelled out of the commitment given to Lincoln Riley, even though he may or may not meet expectations. It shows the commitment and the, the priority that football is at USC, that they determined we want to win and we want to get this right. And we got to make a splash higher. Okay. Five to six years from now, what is, I know what could be exceeding expectations and I certainly know what would not meet expectations. What would be a reasonable expectation of what USC football five to six years from now looks like? USC football is historically one of the top five programs and not many people can argue that. And again, it wasn't, like I said, even with Helton five years ago, they were a top 10, back to back top 10 years. What are, what's the expectation? USC football should be in the playoffs at least every other, if not every three years, without a doubt. They should be, they won't be close because of their lines for the next couple of years, unless there's some mirror. I mean, I don't know. The way he's pulling in transfers, who knows what they'll do? Who knows after spring, you know, after spring ball, it could be a whole new, just massive amount of guys, four or five star guys that just didn't, aren't where they should be they're going to have an issue and they're going to want to transfer somewhere where they can play. So um, where should they be? They should be competing for national championships. That's USC football. I, I can't imagine any other way. The problem was, again, is they had guys that had no idea what they were doing running that athletic department. And the administration was not behind it. So the, the, the fact that they are putting money into this program again and treating it like, because think about the, the facilities have been horrible. The coaching staff have been horrible. You have health and, and I mean, I don't even know some of these coaches healthy digging and scraping. We're just begging for offensive coordinators with, with Harold and, and all sorts of stuff. You know, we're getting turned down left and right. That's not USC football it's because I think they were going in cheap. They didn't have the commitment that schools like, um, you know, OSU had Michigan, Texas, Alabama, Georgia, the big boys. And then all the fan base of USC want to compare us to the, well, they're winning. Well, how come health is not getting? Well, health is not getting those guys because the athletic department isn't giving him a staff. It has him as the head coach to begin with. The facilities are probably top twenty-five, you know, towards twenty thirty. And then you want to compete with programs like Ohio State, like Georgia, like Alabama to spend millions on just recruiting alone. Um, I would love to see the budget, the staff. The big thing for years was the size of staff at Clemson in Alabama compared to what USC had for a support staff. They had like, they had a, this a tiny recruiting support staff. And yet they wanted to think that we were going to compete on a national level. There's no mistake why SEC, the big 10 are where they are or the OS or the OUs and the UTs of the world. It's because they put the money and they invest in the programs. 
And so that's why I'm saying when you look at the, the offensive line, you look at the entire program itself, that Henson hire, the Riley hire, it shows that we're not going for low balling who, who he get in there and who has a USC tie. It's really, it's really been impressive. And I'm, I'm again, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but I wouldn't be shocked to see USC in the top 15, maybe go like eight and four, nine and three next year. And then next year after that, I could absolutely with the offense. Think about this. Imagine Caleb Williams, Travis Dye, Mario Williams, Malik Brown, CJ Williams. Who's going to stop that offense? <laughs> you know, even with a decent O-line, let's just say a run of the mill top 20 O-line. Who's going to stop Caleb Williams, Travis, well, Travis Dye's gone after this year, but Mario Williams, Malik Brown, CJ Williams. I, I'd like to see that defense stop. That would be interesting. Anyway, that's enough venting and ranting. Thank you, Mark. 